we bless you for coming today. I know that there that there are many that uh, many different things that you could be doing today, but I thank you for taking the time and coming and worshiping the Lord with us. And I think it's very important that we recognize that we always need to worship the Lord together. You can worship the Lord on your own all you want to, but there is something about coming together with a body of believers and blessing the name of the Lord together. Amen? Amen. Well, if you're taking notes, would you grab your copy of God's Word as well? I'd like for you to turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1. I've been seeking the Lord about what to do for graduation Sunday. This passage of Scripture kept coming to my mind, and it, you're going to have to excuse me, but Valerie, I'm, I'm going to be coming back there, and Libby, I'm going to be coming up. I'm just going to be walking around the room and kind of getting in the graduates' faces a little bit. As the Lord has given me this word, I, I could not escape it. It was just over and over and over again. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, and this, this particular one is out of the NIV, it says this, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now it also lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame, fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands for the spirit of god gave us uh, not uh, the spirit of god gave us does not make us timid but gives us power love and self discipline and i'm like okay lord what does that mean what does that mean and this is what i felt like the lord told us this is is simply this you got to make this your own especially you graduates you got to make it your own we've lived our lives and many of you Libby I, I, I know you I know you more than I do Valerie but you lived your entire life and it, it, and I, I've known you for many I, I remember when you were just like see this is why I can't have this can we get a piece of duct tape to my chin and just hold it right there I remember when you were just just yay tall and you always singing and 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 in the in the scrooge productions and and always at church but in the end you cannot ride your relationship with the lord you can't ride that out on the wings of your mom john and Teresa any longer y'all here i'm talking to everybody here today someone has someone has gone through this before Valerie, you got you got great mom and a great dad, and your brother's okay too. But you know, it, you, you got great parents, and they love God and they serve God. But you're getting ready to go to Baylor University. That we're we're way far away. You are going to have to make this salvation, this relationship with Jesus Christ. You're going to have to you're going to have to figure out a way to make it your own because it's going to be different. It's going to be different. When you're at home, you know, you, you, you got stuff going on at the house, and then all of a sudden someone kicks the door and says, hey, it's time for church. Get up. Let's go. You know, you got someone that's, that's telling you these things. Hey, it's time to, it's time to get up. You got to go to rehearsal. You got to go to these things. But now that you're out and you're getting ready to go, you got a few short weeks. Now that you're out on your own, you are going to have to be the one to make it your own. Hello. You got to make it your own. So, how how do you do that? How how do you do it? How how do you make a relationship with with the Lord? How do you make it your own when you've been so used to having everyone around you kind of cheering you on and giving you props and saying, "Oh, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on, let's pray together about this." When you're out on your own, now how do you make that your own when you've been so used to all these years with someone really helping you well it's right in this passage of scripture and i want us to break this down here today first timothy excuse me second timothy chapter one verse five let's just look at that verse five what does it say again it says this i am reminded of your sincere faith 
which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded it now lives in you also. You see a generation thing going on there? So if we really wanted to make this personal, if I could just speak to the high school graduates, if I could really make this personal for you, Valerie, it would say something like this. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Joyce, and now lives in your mother Harriet, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. If we want to make that personal, the guys got get kind of ripped off here because it goes scripturally, it goes through the, through the mother's side. But Libby, it, it kind of goes like this. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, with, with faith which first lived in your grandmother Lillian and now lives in your, your mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, hey, let's put that one together. And I am persuaded it now lives in you also. What does that mean? How do you do that? That means just because the people behind you serve God, it doesn't mean that you will. Let's just be real. Let's just be real. Just because your mother and your grandmother and your great-grandmother, just because they serve God all the way to you have got to make a decision, which brings me to the first how-to. If you want to make this your own, you got to want to. Let's just make this just as puree it and make this just as simple as we can and that goes for all of us you've got to want to you have to want to we've heard it all these years come on in we've heard it all these years that of of there man there's like there's been generational curses that's on a certain family generational situations that's going on and and boy but friends let's flip that to the other side there also are generational blessings that come down the line from generation to generation to generation friends can i tell you my generation is pretty good there's a hiccup in the middle where my dad is in there kind of somewhere and i don't even know what he's doing but friends can i tell you i have made a decision that the curses that came along with alcoholism and drugs and fornication i've made a decision that that thing is broken that curse is broken i'm now walking in to generation i have to want it friends i have to want it and that goes along with anything whether it's christianity that goes along with with things in your life whether it would be alcoholism friends you know, it's even, it's even, the studies have even been made that there's stuff in the genes that makes some people more susceptible to be alcoholics than other people. Friends, can I tell you, it's in my bloodline. It's in the DNA that it's come. It's, it's there. There's addiction that is there. And that's why I have made a decision that no way, Jose, I can't do it. Can I tell you, there's some times that I want to. Where's the bourbon? Where's all the rum gone? Oh, there's where it went, right? See, some of you are laughing at that, some of you are not. Can I tell you? There's sometimes, let's just be real. There's sometimes that you just get so heavy that sometimes you want to do, but sometimes you just make a decision that you don't. You just make a decision, you make a choice that you don't. And that's the way that's where it comes right down to it with especially you two graduates, Libby and Valerie. How do you make this your own? You gotta want to. You gotta want to do it. When you're away from from and see, we can we can shut the ears of the parents right now, and I can just talk to you two right now. Guys, when you're 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 away from home and nobody's around, there will be there will be things that the enemy tries to come in that things that you have been taught and things that you have been trained to stay away from, it will, for that opportunity, I, you mark it down, it will come your way. But you've got to want to make the right choice. You've got to want to make the right choice. Now listen, the Word of God, the Word of God tells us this in Psalms 119. It says, 119 verse 110, it says, The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very, very end. Your statutes are my heritage. 
You see, this salvation is not just what we do as a family. This salvation is for you as an individual and who you are. You guys have been you, you guys have been brought up for 18 years, 18, 19 years. You've been taught and trained the ways of the Lord. Now it's time to make it your own. Now it's time to take this which you have been taught and make this a heritage forever according to God's word. It's a heritage. It's yours. You own it. Your, your life is now getting ready to turn and swing into the fact that, guess what? It's not just the Hennon family. Now it's just... It can be just Libby Hennon. I'm Libby Hennon. And you don't have that shroud that's around you all the time. You are your own. Valerie, the same way with you in Texas. It's not just a covering of, of the Kayanja family that's with you. Now it's you are your own. The question is, what will you guys stand for when everybody else is not going to stand for it? Hello? Psalm chapter 78 and I love this, it says, I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things from old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. We will not, we'll not hide from, uh, from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and his wonders have done. He decrees statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. And here we go. Why? So the next generation would know them. Even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. It's generational. It's generational. But guys, just because something is generational doesn't mean that that pattern cannot be broken. You have got to make it your own. And in order to do that, you got to want to. you got to want to. Well, well, how else can I make it my own? How else? What else? Okay, it's more. It's got to be more than just me wanting to, Sister Nona. It's got to be more than that. What else? Well, look. Go back to Second Timothy chapter one, verse six. Look at that second verse. I love this. He tells them, "For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you, not on you, but in you." Through the laying on of my hands. What you guys have got to understand is that you have got to feed the fire. The fire will never feed itself. Hello? You, and this goes for everybody in this room, you have got to feed the fire of the Holy Spirit and rekindle and rekindle and keep putting wood on the fire of your spirit every single day because it will want to diminish. How many like to have bonfires in the backyard? How many how many have got a good bonfire place that you got going on? Absolutely. We like to go out, we like to and I've seen some of these nice bonfire smokestacks. Roy has a is that a coal like a coal filter? It is a massive. I mean to tell you it's the towering inferno right in front of you. I mean, it is awesome, awesome fire. But if he put all that wood on there, we can enjoy that fire for a season, but if we do nothing to maintain that fire, that fire, even though it's a great place, even though it's a great atmosphere, even though at one time it's burning hot and bright and Listen to this. And even though the wood's sitting all around, if I do not move and I do not pick up that wood and put it on the fire, that fire is going to go out. It's going to go out. You see, there's a fire burning for each and every one of us individually, and no one else can fuel that fire except for you. I can't fuel that fire for you. Did you know that? I hear it all the time. It's crazy thinking, but, well, I'm just not getting fed, so I'm just going to, well, wh what are you? Well, you need a bib? I got to bring up a little spoon and, oh, you want your baba this morning? All right. It, what, what is that? Is that what it's what it come down to? I don't think so. We have got to feed ourselves through God's word and praying and fasting and seeking first the kingdom of God. 
We've got to fuel the fire. That's how you can make it your own, Lib. That's how that you can make it your own, Valerie, is you fuel the fire. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, I love this. It says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. You've got to love God. You've got to love God. You've got to love the Holy Spirit. You've got to love Jesus. You've got to love his word. Love him. Not just talk about, well, I love Jesus. Yes, I love Jesus. I'm talking about loving him by doing and in, in, and, not, and we, we all know that gra- you know, grace covers. There's nothing that we can do to inherit salvation. There's nothing. It's all by grace that we have been saved. But, friends, we've got to fuel that fire if we want to maintain it. I don't know about you. I don't want to be satisfied by someone who just comes to church on Sunday. I want to God to see, uh, see God do something on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday as well. I want to see the Holy Spirit move. Right? So we fuel the fire. We fuel the fire. How do you fuel the fire? Well, you fuel the fire. You can start by coming to Wednesday nights and getting taught the marks of a maturing believer. Getting taught and trained. Well, I already went through that. Well, maybe you need to go through it again for crying out loud. Listen. Well, there's nothing to offer. Well, we got stuff on Sunday mornings. It's too early. Friends, we can make excuses till we're blue in the face and you look like Papa Smurf. You can, you can, all these different things. Friends, can I tell you, unless you fuel the fire... It will go out. You cannot ride on two weeks ago the, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and that just happened once in your life. You can't ride on your whole life on that. You cannot go your entire Christianity based upon one momentous occasion. Can I tell you? God will take you from glory to glory, glory to glory, not just one mountaintop experience, and then it's all downhill the rest of your life. You have to feed the fire. Psalm 119, verse 9 through 11. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all of my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands, for I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against God. You got to want to. You got to want to consume God's word. You got to want to do it. You got to... You, you got to fuel and feed that fire through God's word. Y'all are quiet. Is anybody, is anyone sleeping on me today? Poke your neighbor and say, it's time to wake up. Come on now. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if, we ha- but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently. In the same way, listen, guys, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through world- a wordless groans. In other words, what that's saying is you go after God, he's going to fill you, friends. It's just like here this morning. We got in the presence of the Lord, and you could feel the oppressive nature in this service. Friends, can I tell you, I even look in the room, and I feel it all over the place. I'm like, dear Lord, have mercy. We need a release, Lord Jesus. Release that. Friends, When as soon as we said your name is Jesus your name is power you could feel there was something that shifted in this room if it even was just so very so slightly friends that's called fueling the fire it's that's what it's called we fuel the fire when we respond to the Holy Spirit we fuel the fire when we consume God's word we fuel the fire when we're reading and filling ourselves with things that are right and pure and holy that's how you fuel the fire but it's easy to let off the gas a little bit. Hello? It's easy to let off the gas. It's easy to, and it's so tempting just to put it in neutral and coast it a little bit. Well, I got some good momentum now, so I want to put it in neutral, and I'm going to rev that engine and make it sound good. Friends, can I tell you, that's just the sign of a bad transition, transmission. You're not going to go anywhere if that just keeps revving and you're moving forward and there's no, there's no forward motion that's being pushed. Hello? you got to make it your own. 
But here's the last thing. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Bring verse 7 up there. Remember, we got to make it our own. And how do we make it our own? Well, we got to want to. we got to fuel the fire. we got to feed that fire. But look at this. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. What does that mean? That means, listen, if you want to make it your own, you've got to walk in confidence that God said is who he said he is. You've got to walk in confidence. Can I tell you, so many Christians I've seen that they walk around with the spirit of timidity upon them. They walk around with scared at everything and not afraid. They're just afraid to, to take a stand for anything. Can I tell you this? If you don't take a stand for something, you'll stand for everything. I'm going to say it again. If you don't take a stand for something, you will stand for everything. Because anything goes. Because after all, don't you know, we have to coexist. We need to learn to coexist with one another. Friends, I get the whole purpose and the meaning of that. Because at the root of it, everybody wants peace. But coexistence with someone doesn't mean that I'm going to mix and intermingle and throw it into one great melting pot. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, dead, buried, raised again on the third day. He is our soon and coming King and our Redeemer. That's not going to mix with anything else, friends. It's separate. It's not going to mix with anything else. You've got to learn how to stand up for, the, for God's Word on current issues, guys. And, friends, that doesn't, that's not even just talking to our graduates here. That's talking about all of us. Guys, we are living in a world where the spirit of the Antichrist is upon us all the time. We are confronted with the spirit of the Antichrist. We're confronted with the spirit of perversion. We're, we're confronted with the spirit of confusion all the time. Let's go all the way through the current news media, the, the whole Bruce Jenner thing, and all these different things that's going on. Guys, we need to learn how to deal with these issues and still walk in the love of Jesus Christ. Now, as a man's man, I got a difficult time with that. Let's just be really let's just be really honest. That's just the that's the core. If I let my flesh come out, I'm like <laughs> I just choked on my own. <laughs> but listen, as a man of God, I swing that around as a man of God. My heart grieves for someone who is so confused because they have never found out who they are in Christ. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. They were born that way, really. No, friends, it was a choice. But in the end, let's move all that aside. We have got to know. That's why we have to spread the love of Jesus Christ and not be a jerk about it. We all have our opinions, do we not? We all have got our opinions, but friends, we can't not be timid and back up from these issues. Well, I don't know what to say, and if I say what I really believe, then that's just going to cause more. Friends, you can say anything that you need to say in this world, but if you say it with a spirit of love. Now, I understand that there are radicals in this world. There are radicals in this world that no matter what you say, they want you to coexist and they want they they want you to have freedom of speech. But when you give your speech of what there are people that will come, they don't want to hear what you have to say. That's hypocrisy. It is that it's easiest route it is. But can I tell you, as a born again believer, I have got to know where I stand on these issues. Because if you think that that is bad, you wait, friends. The next generation is going to face so much perilous times that even in this nation, it will be declared as hate speech and your children will be thrown into prison because 
they're declaring the truth of God's word about these things. Friends, you've got to know where you stand. You have to got to know, but you can stand and have your face set like flint on issues and still have the love of Jesus pouring out of you. What did Jesus say? That none should perish. That none should perish. You see, if you're going to make it your own, live, Val, if you're going to make this your own, you have to walk in confidence. You have to walk in confidence. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. Faith is confidence. The Bible goes on to talk about in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. It says this, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of Him. Oh, friends, do we not know and can we not understand that we can have a confidence in Christ and still stand upright and still have love even though we're living in a world that is day by day swirling down the, 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 the garbage can of a, a perversion? Do you not know that? We can love people to life. Yeah, but Pastor, I don't I just don't know if I just I, I can't handle that. Friend, then come tonight. Come tonight and we'll find out. Tim just gave me a little snippet this morning. Snippet, snippet, sliver, morsel. He just gave me just just two minutes just sitting back here in the back of this class, especially how how do you share to someone the love of Jesus that, that is struggling with homosexuality and all that? How how is that? You literally take that lifestyle and you push it to the side. That's not the issue. Let's get to the let's get to the heart root of the issue. Let's let's the, friends, can I tell you something? If we think for one moment that that, that we're going to clean up the world and win the world for Jesus Christ by coming in and being created. Our job is not to clean anybody up. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Jesus said, I must go that the Holy Spirit may come. And when he comes, he will bring conviction of sin. You won't. Hello? He will bring conviction of sin. So our job as believers, when we make it our own, we walk in confidence that this is what this is what I believe, this is what I stand on. And can I tell you this, guys, here's the truth. If you believe something that's contrary to God's word, we got a problem then. There's a problem. Stand for Jesus Christ according to his word. So guys, you got to make it your own. My great grandfather he was a pastor. He's a preacher man. Curtis Winfield Marshall was his name. Wow, what a name, man. That's a boxer's name. I think of Curtis He was a minister for 50 years. My grandfather, on another side of the family, he was a minister, loved God, loved to preach the word, loved to teach. Fifth, another 50 years. My dad, through his seasons of his life, he loves God, but we got some war will mess you up guys Vietnam had taken its toll on him and it's taken its toll on a lot of soldiers but then it comes to me 
I have a choice. Am I going to serve God like C.W. Marshall did? Am I going to serve God like Grandpa Booker did? Am I going to serve God like my dad did? You see, I got a choice. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. No matter what persecution comes our way, no matter where that leads me, Lord, I will serve you all the days of my life. So I choose to take this as a generational blessing. And it won't stop with me. It's going to continue for every generation. I declare it until Christ comes. It will not be stopped. How many want that in your life as well? Amen. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes? Friends, let me ask you, is there anybody in this place? Anybody here that would say, you know what, I, I need to get my life right with Jesus Christ. I want to I need to make a fresh start today, and I know that I need to seek Him. If that's you here today, can you just very quickly just put your hand in the air and just say, you know what, that's me. Anybody here? Let me ask you this question. Guys, and this is for everybody in this room. Believe it or not, you you could be 50 years old and still be living your relationship with Christ based upon your family situation. You could still be riding on the coattails of somebody else. You got to make it on your you got to make it your own. Is there anybody here that would say, you know what, Pastor, I need some help with the want to? Did anybody here just put that hand in the air? I, I, I just, I, I just, I need a little help with the want to. How many would say, Pastor, I need a little bit of help with fueling the fire? Come on, let's be honest right there. That ought to hit somebody right there. I need to do better at seeking the Lord. I need to do better at reading the Word. I need to be. How many would say, you know what, I need to take a little bit better of a stand? And they need help. Yeah. Would you all stand to your feet in this place? Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to spend the next couple of moments. But here's what I don't want us to do. I don't want us to just come to the altar on our own. I want you to grab, we'll just call them battle buddies today. I want you to grab a battle buddy. And I want you to come to these altars today just for a few moments and seek the Lord. Pray for one another and ask God to, oh, Lord, please. Help me to fuel that fire. Help me to make this my own. Can you do that? Come, let's fill these altars this morning. That's right, come on. That's right. Come on. Grab somebody. If you don't want to come up here, grab somebody. Pray with them. of your voice. Come on.
Friends, we got to want to. We got to want to. We got to feed that fire. And can I tell you something? It does. It takes time to seek the Lord. And you got to want you got to want to do it. Hello? You got to want to do it. Well, I don't have time. All oh, friends, you got time. Trust me. got to walk in confidence. Confidence in knowing that God is who he said he is and he will do what he said he will do. But to finally make a choice that we really believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? Can you stand to your feet? We're going to continue to stay in this atmosphere, but if you need to go, Please feel released. If you could help us every week just by picking up your trashes. There's a trash can at the back just kind of cleaning up some things. Whether it's yours or not, if you could help us out, I'd appreciate that. Stretch out your hands. Friends and family, I bless you in the name of Jesus. May God make you healthy and strong and vibrant. May your mind be clear and may you be filled with faith and joy and expectancy. May your eyes be fixed upon the author and the finish of your faith. May the Lord show you favor. May he lift the heaviness and the burden off your very back and off your neck, God. May God do it. I bless you now that God would show you favor mentally, physically, and spiritually. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you. We love you. Don't forget, tonight at 6 o'clock, right in this very room. How to be a soul winner. Parents, we will be accommodating and switching some times for you to drop off your kids at the OEB for you tonight for Sunday Night Live. That'll begin at 545 tonight. So parents will offset that so you can get here. God bless.
me. 